Now as it is then folks, looking ahead on your right hand side, up on the key wall you'll see the large red brick building with the tower on the top. Now that's the Senefor Tower, home to the King's Harbour Mart radio, radar and close circuit television. As a passenger boat we have to report into this tower and we leave our boats at Gun Wharf and the historic docks. Tell them what we're up to, you will be keeping a close eye on us, make sure we adhere to all the rules and regulations. Main one, we have to remain 50 metres from any key wall. Any of the ship's stairs jetty, it's here that Buster Crab died at the water, April the 9th. You'll notice on the victory, she's still flying the white ensign. And she's still a commissioned warship, she's still part of our Royal Naval fleet. In fact, the oldest warship in the world today. Also on the back of victory, you'll see three sets of windows to fend off attack from a French invasion. Unfortunately, she sunk a mile off the South Sea Castle, but Henry VIII was watching in horror. She remained on the seabed for over 400 years before being raised in 1982, all back to Port Hope, where dry dock in the world. This is number five dry dock constructed in the year 1698. Now she's 70,000 tons, 280 metres of length, 39 metres of cross. There's 11 metres of up, 48,000 horsepower. With a top speed of 26 knots with a range of 10,000 nautical miles. She's carrying the new F-35 Lightning Strike multi roll fighter plane, built in America at a cost of 100 million pounds in class. The F-35 Swimmer. The deck, on the air deck, is two accommodation blocks, the rear one, flight control. On the fingers first, you will find the 679 crew. The first ship we have around the corner here is E282 with the length of the 7. On the keyboard you'll see the stern of D36 with the length of the suspender. He's one of our Type 45 destroyers. We've got six of these destroyers in the 500 years. As we go on our tour, you'll be looking around three miles. The Ace of Ponds, dug out by hand by prisoners of war. Back in the 1860s and 14 millimeter Mark 9 Vickers gun. The big grey gun that fires from 25 rounds a minute over a range of 22,000 meters here on 12 point Moving on the forest march, you'll see the grey ball of the spikes, that is the Samson Raider. Harry, a burning, all wildcat helicopter. So as we make our way around the second corner, into what's known as Fountain Lake, the next right side, all our guns and bits and pieces have now been removed. It's now in Portsmouth Harbour awaiting our fight. Structure actually built in three separate blocks, so there is a reason for this, so they won't have a fire on board. We passed Kent looking across the quay there, some views another three basin, that's the basin that was dug out by hand by the prison of the war. We actually used some 2,000 convicts and around 1,200 paid labourers in that pond out. 5.7 metres deep over there, all dug out by hand. Only 31,000 tons, she's got a crew of 80 on board. So this is the end of the Royal Naval Stockyard on your right, we're just about to do our turn. As we do so, ahead of us, it's uh, simply on your right, the commercial port, these two keyholes ahead of us. Continuing our turn, another flight service, the Standard Channel Islands. She has just sailed, so we've just got to hang fire for a little while, folks. Then they're going to the ball around another five minutes around with the squid at the moment.
Got him back to Sheerness, but he was taken out not to London for his view. Those days, Brandy and the London Griffin did remark that Brandy was definitely full of money. Passing the island over on your right to the green bushes and trees, that's called Burrow Island. Also known locally as the Also used as a homing station for carrier pigeons before the days of radio. It's only used nowadays by vegetable soldiers. Turn of the 20th century, most of the warships had the road refrigeration on board to bake their own bread. No longer need to store a step over eventually closed. Another large jetty on your right, this one's called the Oil Fuel Jetty. It's here the various Royal Fleet auxiliary tankers come to load. The various oils and fuels keep the Royal Navy on the go today. On your left hand side you'll get some good news of HMS Warrior alongside her pier. She was launched 29th of December 1860 up in Blackwood, London. That just happened to be the coldest day in Britain for over 50 years and she throws to the slip. Braziers burnt round the bottom of the ship. They ordered an extra tug. They eventually ended up with over a hundred men on her top deck, running from side to side, trying to rock her free. After 20 minutes, she gave up and slid down to the river. Steam engine on board.